In this tutorial, we'll walk through the process of publishing our e-learning lesson for use in our online course. So what we're ready to do is, this, is, this is actually occurs after you've added all the content to your lesson and you're ready, everything else is just as you want, now you're ready to publish it and make it available to your students. So there are a variety of ways that you could do this. You could export it into PDF, you could do a variety of things. But in this tutorial, we're going to use a very cool tool called iSpring Free. And as the name suggests, it is a free plugin. And when you install it, it, it appears as a small tab here on the screen. And so you have a, several options here. You have some publish options, some insert options, and some about options. Now there's one thing that I want to draw your attention to is when you're using iSpring uh, Free, you have the ability to add YouTube videos to the content. Now, as you'll recall, on our second slide, the YouTube video, that, or the video that we used, is a YouTube video. And so I actually will need to um, repurpose that. If I was going to publish this as a regular PowerPoint file, it would work just fine. But being that we're doing, using iSpring free, we're going to need to, to redo just that part. So I'm going to go ahead and select that, and then select Delete. And then I'm going to choose the YouTube option directly from the iSpring tab. And this is a great tool because you can add, go in and just add the link to your YouTube video. Just right there in the window. You can preview it if you like. And there it appears. And then I'm going to select OK. And so it appears slightly different in there. And you'll also notice we have this click here to add text. Since it's, it's handling a little different, we can go ahead and highlight that and delete it. So now our YouTube video will appear there uh, when we publish it using iSpring Free. I'm going to go ahead and save my changes. Okay, now I'm ready to publish my file. I'm going to go to the Publish option, not the Quick Publish, because I actually want to define where I want my file to be added. And so here in the presentation title, I'm going to name this Workshop Overview. Okay. Now in the, in the Browse button, I can actually choose where I want iSpring to save my file. So here I'm going to be in My Documents, and I'm going to create a new folder called Workshop Overview. Now the management of uh, how you manage these files rather is very important because the more content you create the more time it, you may have to take to try to organize things. So it's better to do organization up front than trying to do it later. Okay so now that I've defined where I want it to save and it's in a logical location I, I want to in the slide range I want to publish all slides under the uh, options here, I'm not going to be deploying this as a SCORM package, so I can leave that unchecked. I do want to start the presentation automatically. I do not want to loop the presentation or change the slides automatically because the learner is going to actually select content on the screen. Um, these other options here, minimal slide duration, audio autoplay, on-click animations, and advanced animations on mouse click can all remain unchecked. Uh, those are things that we don't really need to, to address. If I wanted to change the background of the, the slide of the page that was published, I could do that as well by selecting there. I think I have all the features here. I'm ready to um, all the features I want to change for the, the presentation, so I can select the publish button. And it's going to take just a few moments to publish this out. Once it's finished, it'll give me the option to view the content. And so there I can appear that. I'm going to go ahead and just double click that. And I have my e-learning lesson that has been published. I'm going to go ahead and select Next. And since I'm not viewing this uh, online, I can watch the video by selecting the link. When this is actually published in an online course, students will be able to directly click the YouTube video and watch it right within context. So again, this is a good usability standard that iSpring allows us to do. Students don't have to go out to a web page to go view a video and then come back. It's all housed within the same, the same lesson. So notice the navigation is working okay. If I go over here, I can select and uh, advance to the to the right uh, pages in the lesson. And everything seems to be working good. And you now have your brand new e-learning lesson that you can apply into your online course. And students can begin using it, all while increasing the learnability of your e-learning.